Heading into this game, it was actually pretty even as to who people thought was going to win. Vegas had it as a pick 'em, meaning you have just as good of odds for either team winning if you bet on them. I mean, this could have gone either way. How did it go so much into New England's favor? I mean, the Chargers aren't a great team, but they've been competitive. They're not a get blown out 45 to nothing team. So what went wrong? Well, let's just start off with the defensive line because they were able to just outsmart the Chargers offensive line all day. Like on this play, this is a stunt, also known as a twist. Basically, the way it works is that you see the, the nose tackled player who's lined up directly with the center. He's going to run to the right uh, of the screen or to the center's left. And what that's going to do is obviously pull the center in that direction. Then you're going to have Chase Winovich, and he's going to run. He's going to try to get to the left of the where we see the center so to the center's right and these are it's pretty simple this isn't anything too fancy uh you see new england especially do this a lot really with winovich he's a guy who bill belichick loves to have be uh sort of the end of these stunts because he's really quick and watch how the chargers just don't pick this up uh you know winovich is able to run through and he's able to make a quick tackle on herbert one thing worth noting is there was a back in this game who ran a route and the Chargers did that all game. Uh, you know, he ended up making the catch, so there was a little bit of a benefit there. But he could have helped block for Winovich. And really, the problem with the Chargers is they never figured out how to stop these all game. Like, here's another one. This time, it's going to be to the left side of the screen. So, you know, it's the other uh, side of the offensive line, the right guard and right tackle, where a defensive end this time is going to try to get to the guard's right side of his body, which now means that 55, he runs to the left side of the right guard, um, and you're able to get a clean shot. That's the way you hope these plays work. Watch once this play starts. You see the right tackle 75, that's Brian Bulaga. He likes to stay pretty parallel to the line of scrimmage, which, you know, uh, a lot of offensive linemen, they have different opinions on how this can work. It's a common saying, you lose ground to gain ground. If you move backwards, you can now have more room to maneuver. He doesn't like to do that, which typically is fine. But now, as you see, when a Chargers guard wants to pass off the defensive end to Balaga, now uh, for New England, 55, that's going to be John Simon. He's just basically having a clear lane to Herbert. He's able to run through. He does get pressure on Herbert. Again, Herbert gets the ball off and gets a completion, but they're not able to get much, and he's under pressure constantly, so he can't really uh, feel comfortable. This play was the worst one because this isn't even the, the New England Patriots outsmarting the Chargers. This is the Chargers outsmarting themselves, where really the key matchup is going to be the Chargers left guard. Uh, he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you would assume, because again, there's four players on the line, so typically uh, you have your center block the guy who he's closest to, and then everyone else has a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and then, you know, your right guard is going to get some help on this play. But the problem with Forrest Lamp, the guard, is I'm assuming he just thought a stunt was coming because they were getting beat on them so much. He's really trying to be careful about not uh, getting beat on that. Uh, it's very weird what he does here, but watch what he does. He just lets 53 run right by him. That's, uh, I believe, Josh Uche. Uh, it's spelled U. C-H-E, no clue how to pronounce that, but give him some credit, he gets straight through for a sack, but really, I mean, or not quite a sack, but nearly a sack, it, honestly, that's just a bad play by the Chargers, though, so you can give credit to New England, because they definitely had a good game plan, uh, and they were able to do these stunts so constantly that the Chargers were getting in their own heads and giving up free pressures, basically, but yeah, that's a huge way that New England was able to get pressure consistently, and honestly, that's the biggest way they were able to win this football game. That just never stopped. All game, they were getting pressure on, like, basically one out of every two or three plays and Herbert was just he was uh, not having a good time back there I want to now go to this play because I think this is going to be a really good example of showing what kind of damage that can really do especially to a young quarterback where something I've talked about in the past is I worry that with this offensive line it could teach Herbert some bad habits and you definitely saw that come true in this game New England's in a cover three zone and the Chargers have a concept that can beat this cover three zone the receiver on the bottom of the screen runs deep they're then going to have a halfback sort of just run underneath and you have a third player who's going to run 
you know in that middle in between where the corner is supposed to cover deep and uh the defensive back who's supposed to cover shallower the flat on the bottom of the screen essentially you know the corner will go deep with the deep route so now there's only going to be one new england player and there's two chargers who can potentially get open so you basically just throw it to where new england does not cover herbert takes a snap and as you see he should throw it to the middle route you know the one that's going to get past the 40 yard line because new england is letting him get further deep and so that's not a good situation for New England. It is a good situation for the Chargers. This is how this play is supposed to work. They could get a big gain. And honestly, there's only one New England player who's deep and you have a blocker. This could go for a lot more than just 10, 15 yards if perfectly executed. But Herbert just quickly throws a check down, which ends up getting dropped. The reason why that play didn't work isn't because Herbert is stupid and made a dumb read. The reason that play didn't work is because Herbert feels like he has to make these decisions so quickly and he feels like he doesn't even have time to throw to a player who's only running 15 yards down the field. There wasn't pressure on that play, so you could easily blame Herbert, but the reason why Herbert made that throw is because he had been getting pressured so much throughout the game. When Herbert had time, he actually played pretty well. Uh, he actually was able to make some throws. Uh, don't get me wrong, the New England secondary did cover very well. This was probably their best game I've seen them cover. However, that wasn't the reason they won by so much. They probably don't get a shutout if there wasn't the pressure that there was. Like, take a look at this one. It's going to be a cover one play. It's a cover one robber, and there's a receiver who's running a, a deep route. It's not going to get quite towards the sideline, uh, but this is a play that can work. But again, it takes some time for it to work. However, Herbert takes a snap. There isn't immediate pressure, and Herbert is able to make this throw. It was a really well-ran route, and they get a big chunk play. And Herbert and the Chargers offense actually looked okay when they had time, but they just couldn't get time. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I, I want to be very clear. The New England defense was fantastic all acro across the board. Their coverage was fantastic in this game, but the Chargers have a lot of really good weapons, and their weapons were able to play decent in this one. They just weren't able to get the ball because they didn't have time. Let's now show this play. This is the last thing I want to talk about, and it's the fact that New England has so many high IQ football players. It's incredible. This one's a great example. It's man coverage. Cover one man. They have a little concept that can work against this type of coverage. Herbert's going to try to hit the out route that's cutting around a 20-yard line, which makes sense. This is the play that can work. Herbert takes the snap, and he's going to look, and you see that, you know, there's two things to look at, the yellow circle and the black circle. In the yellow circle, this is an okay situation. It's going to take a really good throw, but you know what? For Herbert, at this point in the game, it's kind of worth taking some risk. I mean, you're down 35 to nothing in the middle of the third quarter. Uh, you're probably not going to come back, but, you know, give it a shot, make some, take some risk and see what happens. However, Herbert's going about this risk in what I think is the correct way. He's trying to throw it too high and basically force his receiver to make a tough catch. If it's a little bit too high and out of his reach, well, then it falls harmlessly incomplete. And if it's a perfect throw, then the receiver makes a tough catch and probably makes the cra makes the grab and you're able to get a big gain. The problem is going to be JC Jackson, who's in that black circle. Despite the fact that this is man coverage, he's still keeping his eyes towards the quarterback, which should be clear, that can get you into trouble. Like I specifically remember uh, week 17 uh, of last year for New England. Sorry to bring up a sore subject, but you saw Stephon Gilmore make a big mistake where he was trying to look around when he was in man coverage and got beat by Parker. But JC Jackson is going to do that because he's in good position. He can do that. He turns his head up, he realizes where the ball is, dives and makes a really good play. That looks like it's a bad throw from Herbert, but it really wasn't. I don't I don't have a problem with that throw. He wanted to force his receiver to make a tough catch, and he was okay with overthrowing it. It was just an incredible play by JC Jackson. Sometimes you have to give the defense some credit. The other interception was just as impressive. Where for the Chargers, what they're gonna do is they have a rollout. It's uh, going to be a little pick play on the bottom of the screen. This works really well against the man coverage. Unfortunately, it's not man coverage. This is going to be zone. So it's a third down and two. They just wanted a couple yards. But, you know, I mean, just think about it. If it's a man coverage, well, then you can see how it would be, a, be an issue. But with the zone, you're basically just taking one of your receivers out uh, of the play altogether. And your other receiver is running a very easy to protect route so herbert looks in that direction but sees nothing's open so he looks around and he spots something that looks like it could get open 
the player who I've circled in black is Chase Winovich, who's usually an edge rusher. So he kind of drops back in the coverage. I think this is probably just because he saw the rollout, and there's probably a design that when you see a rollout to the other side of the field, you then just drop back in the coverage. That's what he's doing here. And now he looks over and he sees where Herbert is probably going to throw this ball to. He's looking at Herbert. He reads Herbert's eyes and uses that as a tool. He does cut in front, gets that interception. Those are both incredible plays. And you can blame Herbert if you want to. I don't really. I think this was a, a clear example of a game where the quarterback had no shot when they stepped onto the field. So yeah, just to recap, for the Chargers, I mean, you got to fix that offensive line and you got to get a new coach. I think they'll be doing both of those things in this offseason, so I'm not too concerned. The only concern I have is that Herbert could learn some bad habits. Uh, but other than that, I think the Chargers are definitely on to upswing. And as for the Patriots, I just don't know how well this will work on Thursday against a really good offensive line who knows how to communicate and knows how to stop stunts. So it's going to be much more difficult, no doubt about that. Granted, this was pretty easy, so most teams are going to be much more difficult, but they still have smart players, and they still have players who can take advantage of throws that maybe shouldn't be made, and so that's going to happen in every game. So definitely New England is a force to be reckoned with, although let's not take too much into account, despite the big victory, uh, except for the fact that their special teams is awesome, we know that, uh, and the Chargers special team sucks, uh, we also know that. But yeah, I think that that's, that's what I think happened mostly in this game. You got to give Patriots credit, though. I mean, listen, they're getting better every week. Maybe they'll find another good game plan to beat the Rams and continue this winning streak. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.